Welcome to Blissful Living, a podcast for those of us who are ready to ditch the life clutter and negative vibes so that we can embrace our true potential and live our best lives. I'm Ashley Nicaposta, an interior designer, blogger, author, and most recently a new mom doing my best to figure out how to balance it all and follow my bliss. Good morning, my beautiful blissful friends. Welcome back to the Bliss Vibes Only podcast. I am recording today sitting in my most comfortable, beautiful chair. I've got my candles going and it is lightning and thundering outside. It is so beautiful. There's nothing I love more than like a thunderstormy, rainy day. It just fuels me. You know, it used to be like vitamin D in the sun and being outside in the sunshine, those days were my favorite. But honestly, for being creative and pouring my heart into work, something about rain and the thunderstorms, it just, I just love it. It like ignites a little magic inside of me. Roman is down sleeping for his morning nap. And I will tell you, you know, mom life is a struggle, especially being a new mom and a first time mom and really trying to figure out, you know, sleeping schedules and managing sickness and all they do. It's really so hard. So he was like chewing on my pumice stone from the bath this morning. And I'm like, oh my God, it's just wild. Like all the things that you deal with and go through and experience and you don't know what to do. So I was actually going to like Google baby chewed on my pumice stone. Like, is that bad for him? Is that horrible? And I mean, I cleaned out his mouth. Everything seems to be fine, but it's just, it gives you so much anxiety and you you deal with so much. And then when you finally get them to sleep and they go down peacefully, it is like such a win. It's so crazy. And then I feel fully you know, available for myself to show up and really create and work. And it's just a whirlwind. It is wild. So for those of you who are moms, I know you feel me. And for those who are not moms yet or soon to be moms or anything like that, like you are in for a wild ride, I'm telling you. (laughs) Anyway, so thank you guys for always being patient with me and for just being here and listening to the podcast today with me. I'm excited for our chat today. So what I want to talk to you about is something that I feel like we all probably do and have always known, but we're going to add a little magic to it. And that is creating altars in your home. Now, Bliss Vibes Only podcast is meant to be like girly, fun, and spiritual conversations because I've always been a very spiritual person. But I don't want it to feel intimidating or too like woo-woo or witchy. I want you to understand that these things are totally normal and totally fine and don't cross any other spiritual barriers. I think sometimes with like this new just like manifestation world, law of attraction and a lot of new age spirituality and Christianity and Buddhism. There's just so many, you know, different things out there that people can get confused and really afraid of what they don't know. Like a quote unquote altar sounds a little like witchy, right? But it's totally not. It's something that we do every day. In feng shui, creating an altar just means putting your intention and energy to styling up a space, whether that be your nightstand or a fireplace or, you know, a little side table somewhere, your coffee table. And you want it to really express not only who you are, but you want it to express where you're going and the life that you want to lead, the woman that you want to be. It's basically a decorating tool to create your best life. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And it's something that we all have access to and that you literally could look anywhere, even if you are in your cubicle or you're at your desk, like there is a way to alter that space too and make it like a little beautiful shrine into the woman that you want to become. Okay, so I'll get into my tips, but first I'll give you a little story. So I started seeing a therapist a few months ago because because of the mom life you know, struggle. 
A friend of mine, Kat, who is a blogger with Love From Kat, she recently wrote a post on, you know, therapy and um, hiring a therapist. I think I can link it for you guys in the show notes, but it's a really thoughtful, well-written piece talking all about therapy and why it's really not so intimidating, scary, or taboo. It's actually something that is very productive for mental health. And I will tell you personally, for me, having a therapist has been such a cool thing because she's really helped me understand like why I have certain thought processes and why actually a lot of the things that I think and do are really normal and I'm like overly judging myself. So I will say it's something that's really helpful. It's not that weird. It's not that, you know, someone has like mental disability or is, you know, psycho or really needs help. Therapy really can be for everyone. And it has been so helpful for me, especially in the new mom transition. I feel like women who are going through any big changes, like you're just married or you're just had a baby or just anything like that. You really do need support. You really do need, you know, a strong sounded professional support system to navigate you through it. When I just became a mom, I joined this like mommy baby group and we were all new moms and we sat around and talked about things and our struggles. And I will tell you, it really was the number one thing I highly recommend for anyone who's just had a baby. It was so helpful and you bond with those women and their friendships for life and It's just really, really helpful and supportive. So anyway, back to the story. I was talking with my therapist the other day, and I've been talking about channeling this like warrior goddess woman who I feel like I really need because sometimes I get defeated. And when I have these defeating moments, like when Roman was sick with the flu and I was sick with the flu, I felt super weak and I just... Like couldn't handle it. Like it just was too much for me. I wasn't feeling in my power. And I feel like life can get the best of us when we're not feeling in our power. So how can we work to more channel that like empowered side of us? So I wanted to talk about something that you can do at home to help you with that. So she gave me some exercises that I can do in my journal and things like that, but there's actually a way that we can apply it to our home to help us if you don't have time to sit down and write out affirmations and things. And that is to create a beautiful altar in a particular part of your home that makes you feel empowered that makes you feel beautiful and makes you feel like your best self and that's where you can kind of go and connect and really channel that now here's something really exciting so this friday tomorrow night at about 7 p.m give or take a couple hours depending on where you're located is going to be the full moon and it's the pink full moon which the pink kind of symbolizes spring you know it's kind of going into this beautiful light heart season and with every full moon new moon you know we kind of can go with the energies of the moon we can use this time in our home to really create things to represent us so it's a perfect time for you at home to create an altar now this altar doesn't have to be like you know, witchy or woo woo or spiritual or to like, you know, have incense and sage and candles or whatever. It can absolutely, but it can also just be an area in your home. So for me, I think I've got this where I record my podcast and I sit and I work. I've just got this beautiful chair and next to me, I kind of have a little table and it's like where I keep my crystals and candles and I'm just going to bring fresh flowers and get a new candle for myself and perhaps a fresh journal. I think I actually have a need for a fresh one. And you're going to sort of refresh that space. Now, what's one thing I would like you to also do is in my newsletter list, which you can go into the link in my bio on Instagram or on my blog, thedecorista.com anywhere you pretty much can get on the newsletter list and download a copy of the Bagua map. 
Okay, most of you should have this by now. If you don't, you can also email me ashlina at the decorista.com. I can get you one. You can also Google it. Just Google Feng Shui Bagua map and it's pretty self-explanatory. But the one I have kind of tells you like colors and areas and what they mean and, and all that. But so you're going to find the Bagua in whatever room it is that you're going to create this altar and see what that area of the home is. So let's say you're like, you know what? I want to restyle my coffee table. That's in the center of the Bagua. That's in the health space. So I would work with the power of Feng Shui and the power of the energy in the room. And perhaps say to yourself, okay, how can I improve my health? How can I be healthier? How can I channel that into the decorating of your coffee table or the styling of your coffee table? So what can you do? You can bring fresh flowers. You can have a candle that smells like lightheartedness and health and wellness to you. You can place crystals that correlate with health in a bowl, or you can place lemons or citrus citrus in a bowl is always a health symbol and you know wellness life invigoration that kind of thing orchids to me are one of my favorite flowers in a home because they last a really long time they grow really tall they're just a symbol of longevity so think about these things when you're sprucing up this area of your of your home essentially your altar and what I would do is pay attention over the next few days to this area and see how it makes you feel. See how styling it makes you feel. Maybe you want to take a trip to your favorite store and go treat yourself to something that you think is really beautiful and you could add it to your altar. One of my favorite things that I have is this brass seashell dish that's like a jewelry dish. And I love kind of placing it in different places around my home. I have crystals in it. I'll drop my jewelry that I'm currently wearing in it. It's just kind of makes me feel a little more fabulous. I just love the thing. So see where you can add something like that into your home and it'll kind of like give you that extra just strength, empowerment. When you're taking care of yourself and you're taking care of your home and you're doing little detailed touches like this, to your life that helps build your confidence and helps build your power in a way that isn't so intense you're not having to work really hard at it now obviously a lot of us feel that we need to work really hard for something to work but I want you to remind yourself that you don't have to work so hard the truth is you can work as little or as hard as you want at something and still achieve the result. Now, I don't mean, you know, don't get, let me confuse you. I don't mean that you can go to the gym, walk on the treadmill for 10 minutes and you're going to get healthy or you're going to get, you know, lose 20 pounds or whatever. What I'm talking about here is that small little actions have a big impact. So it doesn't have to be you work so hard. Like you don't have to fully redecorate a home. In other words, you can just go and freshen up the flowers or maybe get some new pillows and it will have the same effect in the long term. Or if you are just feeling like you needed a freshening up or you needed a change somewhere. So for let's say working out or health, you can just simply start drinking more water make these small adjustments and that will lead you on the path to where you're losing that weight you see so i really just want you to get in the headspace of like things actually don't have to be so hard and difficult and you don't have to put so much pressure on yourself you can just have these like baby step actions that will lead you to the same result so take the pressure off yourself feel easy about it and really enjoy it so as you're decorating your altar space, I want you to have it feel easy and let it allow it to feel like it's very natural. It's very easy. This is a habit that you have, like really tap into that feeling. You particularly want to experience it as the woman that you want to be, right? Okay. So this is a ritual, by the way, so you can really make this feel as ritual as you want it to. And I want you to 
take your altar space or the space that you want to decorate, refresh in and work on it and really look at it. Think about what colors you need to add there and you can learn that from the Bagua. Or you can simply just kind of channel like, what color am I loving lately? Do I feel like I want more pinks? Maybe I could do some pink flowers. Are you really loving coral like me? That's like my color right now. And I've been looking for coral roses everywhere. I'm like, uh, I just love them. So it's really a time to get in tune with your intuition and just trust what you feel. Don't overthink it. Just kind of go with it. Now, don't judge yourself on if it's not perfect looking or if this space isn't finished yet like let's say well I haven't found this or that for this particular area still make it as pretty as possible even if you've just moved into a space or perhaps you're living with your significant other like me and he's very particular about the decor and the style of the home he loves mid-century modern and you know he loves art and he's just he's very particular we both have to be in agreement with what goes in and around our home because we both love that stuff so much so don't think just because it's not perfect in your mind that it can't be just as beautiful and functional so I have beautiful a little beautiful like Buddha praying statue on my bedside table and pretty candles there and flowers and I even put a really pretty plant on his side of the bed too so those are little areas I like to touch up I always love the bedside tables those are always areas for me that I feel like we wake up to every morning we go to bed at night they're beautiful little altars and shrines and you can have pictures of you know you and your loved one or the things that you want to attract I always have a picture of the Eiffel Tower and the beach in my home those to me are just my favorite places I always want to attract that energy and infuse it in my home so think about that now as you're decorating your altar and you're refreshing whatever space that you want okay breathe and breathe really deeply like really you know, feel the energy that you are putting into your space. And I want you to think about these questions while you're doing this. What am I calling in? What do I most desire in my life? What beginning am I stepping into? Like what chapter am I about to create for myself? And then who am I when I feel most aligned? And empowered these are four questions that I got from the moondeck.com you can go check them out they're really awesome but I really love those questions they really resonated with me because there's something that I pretty much already use but I liked that they kind of had them these four together so I wanted to really share those I want you to feel those and if you want to journal them out you know, in, in a quiet moment, fine. But like me, I don't always have time to journal. So I just think about them in my head and I kind of let them ruminate in my mind for the day and kind of see what comes up for you as you're like shopping for this, as you're decorating your altar, as you're just kind of creating this, like what is coming up for you? Listen to your intuition, listen to what it says, just kind of see how this whole experience begins to feel. Allow yourself to be creative, just follow your instincts, just kind of go with it and don't take it too seriously. Like you have next month, we can do a whole other altar. You can do this all over again. So it's don't put pressure on yourself, but definitely create this space to represent who you want to be. So a few things I like to do is kind of bring my favorite coffee table books, right? And put them in whatever place that I really feel empowered by or photos of like, there's this one photo I have in my home. I think I'm going to put it on Instagram. You can follow me at Ashley Nicaposta and it is of this woman warrior and she's like a goddess and she's at the beach and she's just so strong and she's jeweled up she's just got this amazing jewelry and just everything about her I'm so into and I just love and she really just makes me feel empowered so I kind of like to keep that picture of her close by to wherever you know space I'm like 
fine tuning at the moment, right? So make sure that all the things in this altar and this space in this area that you're decorating really speak to who you're wanting to be, especially in these next like 30 days of this cycle until the next full moon, right? Okay. So with that, I think I'll just leave you guys. I want to send you off into the weekend. Maybe you guys will go shopping this weekend and shop for your altar and start setting it up by tomorrow evening, Friday, about 7 p.m. That's when I would at least begin. So you can start by placing the flowers there or lighting a candle there or placing a crystal there, whatever it is that you feel most needed and really let yourself be drawn to that space. Perhaps you'll go out and you'll find like the perfect thing for that space you've been looking for at the local flea market or anything. There's like the opportunities are endless. Like you can totally work with the magic of the universe on this one, but I really want you guys to make sure that you're cultivating and you're taking care of your home. Don't forget it is one of the pillars of bliss. So we always need to be flowing with it, touching it, you know, feeling up the energy. That's what feng shui is all about. It is that chi, that life force that is moving throughout our environment that we really need to continually keep up. It's not just important to clean at your home, like scrubbing your toilets and cleaning the shower. Like you've got to do the energetic clean too, so that you're truly living in your most empowered and best version of yourself. Okay, guys, so I'm just going to leave you with that. Those are my thoughts for the day. And if this was a ramble, I didn't even know I was going to talk about this this morning. So I just really felt called to, and it was like coming out in me. So I'm happy to share with you. And I really appreciate you for listening. Make sure you head over to the decorista.com. I'll be doing blog posts on this. Follow on Instagram, Twitter, all the different places. We're at Ashlina Caposta or The Decorista or Blissful Living Co. Have a beautiful weekend, guys. Until next time, stay blissful. 